we're now going on to our, our basic grammar and language course with um, the Thomas Eginus book. And those of you who were here last time round may recall that I'm going to try and make this to the extent possible uh, more of an interactive thing with people actually answering questions and doing bits of translation, Sanskrit to Pali and Pali to Sanskrit, sorry, um, English to Sanskrit and Sanskrit to English. Um, if everybody, it would be impossible with a class this size to have um, everybody doing it. So we agreed, or those of us who were present last time agreed that if you have left your face visible, <laughs> that means that you are volunteering to be in the firing line to be asked to perform. Um, ah, that's wonderful. I've seen a couple of faces have become visible as soon as I said that, including yourself, your son, Yu Wai Maung. Yes, welcome. Good. Aiden, okay. So those who are visible means you're putting yourselves in the firing line. <laughs> some of you look very pleased about it. Some look kind of brave, but doubtful. Ah, Roger's shaking his head slightly. It's not so bad once you get going. This is the first time I've, now what happened, I don't know if everybody, because of the time available, I don't know if, if everybody will, um, will get a chance. What I'm attempting to do is just make a written note as I go along, um, who has been asked, who has had an opportunity, um, to take part in this. And anyone who's missed out will, you know, will be at the top of the list next time. So as we roll along, hopefully, I'm trying to work it so that you know, everyone gets an equal share, an e e equal turn. And I will be selecting my victims, sorry, not victims, no, my willing participants. I will be selecting my willing participants in accordance with them. Um, with where you appear on the screen. Um, if there's anybody, I can't see anybody at the moment where there are two, but I'll treat you as two separate people if, if there are two of you visible in, in, in the screen. So here we go using the Thomas Eginus book. And here I will try as far as possible um, to, okay, this Odin's screen share reminder. Thank, thank you, Odin. I, I'm deliberately not, not, not sharing now. I was coming to that point. I will try as far as possible to keep this, keep this oral. Hopefully you've all got um, the, the, the Thomas Egerus book. So I put it up to the camera. Um, those of you who haven't, there's the P PDF um, that is available on one. Oh, goodness me. This Mariana has got a, looks like a more advanced edition. Oh, very good. Um, but there's also the P P PDF with, where, where the link is given somewhere on the where, website. But we'll, we'll try and keep this oral. Remember, of course, the, the importance in Sanskrit, the cultural importance of it being primarily treated as, as, as a spoken language. Um, and even to this day, uh, the, 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 the Brahmins regard the, the, the writing down of the Sanskrit as a mere ancillary thing, maybe, um, maybe a, an aid to memory, but the real recitation, the recitation of the Vedas was very much an oral thing. Um, traditionally in Indian society, you didn't sit down and read the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, all of those things. They were, they were recited in, in, in groups of people, recited in public, recited in, in the village. It was very much an oral tradition. And bear in mind, you know, the, the Pali suttas you know, weren't written down for something like you know, 500 years after the death, death of the Buddha. And when they were first actually committed to writing in uh, what is now Sri, Sri Lanka. So the oral tradition is still very much alive in, in even in, in, in modern, modern India, especially among, among the Brahmins. So with, with that background, unlike, of course, the Chinese tradition, where the, 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 the essential, culturally essential part 
is the is the writing it's the exact opposite of how it is in in um, in Indian tradition. So we were looking at the verbs. I'm going to deliberately avoid now using my iPad and a shared screen. I'll try and pronounce it as clearly as I can. I want a bit of coffee. By the way, for any of you who are wondering, this is not a mug of Guinness. It is slightly frothy coffee, just to, just to set, set, set your minds at rest. So here we go. <laughs> the characteristic ending of the first person, the I, is the army. And the root here is the, for the simple, actually the very first verb they give is you know, a slightly irregular verb. The root gum to go. You don't say gamami, that doesn't exist. It's gachami. It's slightly irregular that changes to a double chair. I think there's only one other verb from yam yachami, um, but it's a slight irregularity. Don't let bother you. You know it now anyway. There it is. You see, that wasn't that bad. You've learned a slightly irregular verb already. Gum gachami. So gachami, I go. And the endings for the second and third person are asi, A S I, and ati. So getchesi in the singular, you go, getcheti, he, she, or it goes. And from the root prach to ask, I ask, you ask, he asks is prichami, prichesi, pricheti. The word for and is cha. It's written in transliteration as a C-A. As I said last time, as most of you I think will know, it's cognate with the, with the Latin que, which, and in Latin as in Sanskrit and Pali, it is added at the end of the, of the noun or, or verb that it uh, re refers to. So if you say, and he goes, you didn't say cha, gachati, that would be wrong, it would be gachati, Note also that you can repeat it. So, in one of the examples given, he asks and I go. Okay, here we go. Top left on my screen is yourself, Chris. So, how would you say in sounds? Yes, you. <laughs> Twum, Twum Eva. Even you. <laughs> So, um, so how would you say that in Sanskrit? Um, he asks and I go. Prachati kachati me cha. Sorry, can you say that he asks is prachati? Okay. Um prachati. Remember that in in this, um, in the transliteration that we're using, and this has been common among um, scholars in the West, um, ooh, for goodness me, ever since the early 1800s, I think. Yeah. But the, the, the letter C is simply by convention in transliteration used to represent the Sanskrit and Pali sound ch. So the k sound will always represent with a k, our Roman letter k, whereas the ch sound we will always represent as our letter C. So whenever you see the letter C in transliteration, it's always a ch sound. Right. So I was with, a bit put off by the double C in the transliteration. So by, by the double C? Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay, here I will go to the shared screen. Sorry, let me just share screen. Where are we? Share screen. Machine. Sure. I'll just see your screen. So I think I've. There we are. Right. Right. Sorry, I was having a slight techno problem. So the cha, wrong screen. So the cha sound, 
the, that is cha. When you double it, um, I'm going to write a Pali word now. So Sanskrit nitya, meaning permanent. Pali, is, that's, that's not nikka, that's nitya, nitya. Now there's another little rule coming up where you, where you have a consonant that is aspirated. There's not a cha, but a cha. There's a puff of air coming after it. Just as we say, for example, that's not Buddha, it's Buddha. There's a distinctly audible H there. Whenever you get an aspirated consonant that is doubled, only the first part of it, sorry, only the unaspirated part is doubled. So when you double a ch, it becomes just unaspirated plus aspirated. So nicha. And here, sorry, prichati. Prichati. Um, we see it, for example, in um, Artha, which in, in Pali doubles it to Artha. So you hold it and then let the puff out at the end of it. Artha, Buddha. So Pricha. So, Chris, try again with I ask would be. The shape of your mouth look perfect. If you unmute yourself, we can hear, hear you as well. <laughs> okay, I, I, I ask. Prichati. So, so say again. Prichati. Okay. When you said Prichati, what did that mean? He asks. He asks. Okay, fine. And I ask would be? Prichami. Excellent. You've got it. Well done. So we'll go on to the exercises now. Um, that's um, on those of you who have, have the printed book. Let me just unshare for the moment and stop share. Good. So on page five, um, if you will have it, 5A, the next. The next face along on my list, on my screen is Mariano. So Mariano, can you look at um, exercise five, sentence A, read it in Sanskrit and then tell us what it means. Uh, 5A, you are saying. Um, 5A. On page, you say. Um, on printed page seven, uh, seven of the, of the printed book. Uh, okay, I've got Pritchasita uh, Gachatita. Yeah, so, so, say again. Pritchasi Gachatita. Uh, sorry. Pritchasita Gachatita. Right. Um, he asks, uh, sorry, you ask and uh, he goes. And he goes, yes. Now, as for yourself, as a native Italian speaker, you will have absolutely no problem with the correct pronunciation of the doubled consonants. Italian is full of them. However, um, you, it, you, need, you need to get that puff of breath for the huh, which um, for some reason you've dropped in Italian. In fact, not only you, the Italians, the, the Spaniards have dropped it, the French have mostly dropped it. So Picassi, this, this pub, Puff of air is is a pretty Okay, pretty term. Gotcha, teacher. Okay, excellent. For that same sentence, what is an alternative, correct alternative way of saying it? Um, what it what, would... what can you leave out from what is on this um, on the printed page? One two. Yes, which one? Uh, the middle one. The middle one, yes, correct. So you can say prichasi kachati cha. If you repeat the cha, it can have the meaning 
it, it can have a slightly emphatic meaning. For example, in, in English, we can say A and B, hmm? or we can slightly emphasize it by saying both A and B. So the, the, the it could be that the first, well, the second one is almost uh, the result of the first one. It could be if it is overemphasized, meaning exactly. the second one goes because the first one really says, uh, "Can continue? you go?" Indeed, that 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 that's right. There could be kind of a, a causative sequence, not an express causative sequence, but an implied. Cause him say, I say, and he does it. You're right, he does it because I say so, and so on. Good. Um, so the next one, B, and you're next in line, Kath. Um, un unmute, Kath. You're still muted. Yeah. So, gachami prachami cha. Okay, so, say again. Gachami prachami cha. Excellent, yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Um, gachami prachami cha, meaning? So, I go and I ask. Yeah, correct. And how could you say what is an alternative correct way of saying if you say if you wanted to emphasize emphasize I both go and I ask? Um, that would be um gachami cha prachami cha. That yeah, absolutely correct. Good. Um now on to yourself, uh John. Um that's a num sentence C. Prachati cha gachati cha. Right, so, so, say again. Prachati cha gachati cha. Right. The, it's more of a dr. Prachati. 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 Right. So, so, so say the sentence again. Prachati cha gachati cha. Right. Um, Stress isn't that important in Sanskrit, but if a gachati, the stress would tend to fall more on the first syllable. A very light stress, gachati. And the meaning of that is? Uh, he asks and he goes. Right, excellent. Um, right, the, the next one is um, Bill, your turn. So remember to unmute. There we are. Okay. Um, are we on? Um, are we on D? D. That's correct. Gachasi prachami ka. Uh, the uh, ka. Um, remember the the C always represents the ch sound. Ch. Gachasi prachami cha. Right. It says gachati gachasi prachami cha. So say once again. Gachasi prachami cha. Good. And the, hang on, I'm just going to stop the screen share. Sorry. Boom. So I was trying to do a stop share as I've been asked to, and it's not quite working. Oh. Never mind. Never mind. So, and the meaning of that is, Bill? Go and ask. Go and ask. Um, so who goes? Oh, oh, and, hang uh, on. Uh, yeah, uh, go and ask. Ah, um, if you were using that as an imperative, if you were telling somebody to go and ask, this is getchesi. It's the indicative, meaning it's a statement. You are going or you go. It was just the imperative, ordering oh, oh, somebody. So, sorry, it's I, I go, I go and ask. Ah, so get I, 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 Sorry, I, it's I go and I ask. I go and ask. Oh, no, oh, if, sorry, sorry, it's me. I, it, get chassis, that's you go and, uh, and I ask. Okay, correct. You go and I ask. If you wanted to say, 
I go and ask, how would you say it? Okay. Uh, Kachami Ka. Cha, not Ka, Cha. Kachami Ka. Prachami. And I ask, you'd have to put the cha at the end. Prachami Cha. So uh, I go, I go, and I ask, uh, "Gachami, cha, prachami." Okay, but you have to put the cha at the end if you want to move uh, to uh, leave leave uh, out uh, a cha. Oh yeah, sorry, yes, yes, "Gachami, prachami, gachami, prachami, ka, ka." Remember, it is a cha. When you cha, see, cha, 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 cha. <laughs> when, when in this in this is purely purely con con conventional. It's just by, by scholarly convention we use the, the the letter C to represent the cha sound. So it would be so. I go and I ask, and it's gachami prachami cha. Have one more go, so I can be satisfied you've really got it, Bill. Okay. Uh, so no E then. Are we going? And uh, no, we're on uh, on D. So it's still on still. D. Okay. Uh, so. Um, it, it means um, uh, it means um, it means that you, uh, it, it means you uh, you go and um, and I ask. Yeah, that's correct. Got it. And just say it once more in in Sanskrit. Gachasi prachami. Ka. Oh, I've got that wrong again. The ka. Wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> cha, cha. Okay, got it. Okay, fix that firmly in the mind, Bill. Yeah, it's cha, there. Cha. <laughs> right. Right, next one, sentence C. Um, your name isn't up. It's, I've just got MEP admin, but without, without your name up. Sorry. Sorry, it's Bob. Much easier, Bob. much easier than MP admin. I'll have to change it at some point. Okay, sorry right. About that. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, so it's E, I think, isn't it? Um, it's E, that's right. So it's, uh, yeah, Prachati uh, Prachamicha. So, <clears throat> so he, he asks and I ask. Exactly so. What's an alternative correct way of saying it? Well, you would use the two chas. Yeah. So it'd be that's exactly correct. Good, that's right. Um, so now sentence F and uh, Roger, you're next. Um, un unmute, Roger. Gachasi cha gachati cha. Right, and that means? You go and he goes. Okay, put that the other way around. Um, put now the, the other way around. He, he goes and you go. Gachati cha gamachi ka. Did you say gamasi? No, gachasi. I meant to say gachati cha <laughs> gachami ka. Okay, uh, cha, remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Say it once more so I can be satisfied that we have achieved perfection for this sentence in lesson one. Gachati cha gachami cha. Excellent. That's it. Jolly good. Now, sentence G, and that is for yourself. Um, I have your name as Sun Yu Waimon. How, how, how may we call you? Uh, unmute. Okay. Uh, you can call me Sally. Sally sorry? Wimau is my Burmese name. I'm sorry, say again, I didn't catch well. Uh, Sally Wimau is a little bit difficult to pronounce. My Burmese name. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, you can so, call me Sally. 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 Sally, yes. Okay. Um, anyway, I much prefer Sanyu Wimong. Is it Sanyu Wimong? Yes, Sanyu Wimong. It's much more beautiful in Burmese. San, San, San okay. Thanks. Okay. But we can call you Salik. <laughs> okay. It's easier. We aren't here. 
to make things easy. We're here to <laughs> overcome difficulties, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, so we, we're now on, oh, sentence H, I think. Uh, H, okay. So, Prachati Cha, Kechami Cha. Right. Um, say that again with particular attention to the length of the vowels. Prachati Cha, Kechami Cha. Okay. Actually, that was very interesting. The, 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 the vowel of cha is short. Okay. Um, for English speakers, to pronounce a monosyllable with a short final syllable is difficult. We tend to say cha, because it's a cha. However, however, you'll very often find when you're hearing Sanskrit being recited, that if a short vowel like cha comes at the end of a phrase, it will tend to be slightly lengthened, cha, pretty cha. It, but it will still be the short vowel, but just because it's the end of the phrase, it'll tend to be drawn out a bit. So the way you said it, Sally, yes. it was you made the vowels long, slightly long, but okay. in a way that it would often, in fact, be done by a Brahmin. So maybe, maybe you've heard many Brahmins reciting, and that, that's how it's done. <laughs> Yes, as I'm Burmese, like um, Buddhist reciting, so I'm a little bit familiar with that. Okay, in fact, if you've been heard, for example, as you will no doubt have done, being heard, hearing um, chanting in Pali, for example, yes. very often, um, if the a final vowel, which is short, will just, because it's chanting and because it's at the end of the sentence, will tend to lengthen. So, for example, if you were saying just an ordinary buddhang saranang gachami, the short i, but if you were chanting it, buddhang saranang gachami, it can be lengthened. That's not a grammatical lengthening. Grammatically, it's still the short i, but it will tend to be lengthened. So, so the, the, the way you did it was right, but I'm just highlighting that you know, this lengthening of the, of the vowel is purely phonetic, for recitation and not, not grammatical. Okay, great, thank you. Um, now, um, for following into Sanskrit, and we somebody uh, somebody is looking into Aiden's screen. I don't know whether that's somebody wanted to participate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's your turn, Aiden. Following oh, into. That's um, that's uh, let's that's, um, exercise six, sentence A. Okay. Uh, so I go and I ask. I go and I ask is um, gachami cha prachami cha. Excellent. And an alternative way of saying it is. Yeah, to remove the middle cha. So mm -hmm, it'll be yes. Gachami. Prachami cha. Excellent. Exactly right. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> I don't know who unmuted me. <clears throat> no, we are. That, 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 that all, all came through clearly and perfectly. Thank you. Right. And um, the last face on the screen. Welcome to us, Brother Kao. <laughs> so that's some um, sentence B in... Um, exercise six, you ask and he goes. Okay, James. You ask and he goes. So it's a prachasi cha gachati cha. So can you say that first word again? It didn't come through very clearly on my speaker headphone. Prachasi. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Prachasi. So say that in the, give the alternative version of that. <coughs> so it's a prichasi gachati cha. Excellent. That's absolutely perfect. Okay, thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Gao. And for sentence C, were to yourself, Angela. Uh, un un unmute. Remember? I'm unmuted. Hey, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. 
So yeah. which, so which uh, one again? It's um, six C, he asks and you go. Asks. He asks is, um, he asks is Prachati Cha and Hugo is, um, Hugo is Gachasi Cha. So, so yeah, Prachati Cha, Gachasi Cha. I think that's that right. Yeah. So, 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 so say it once. Sorry, my attention got distracted by writing. No, no so, problem, so, so, no so, 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 say it once more then, Angela. He asked. Yes. Go. He asked. Um, Prachat, prachati cha, gachasi cha. Say that word gachasi again. Oh, ga oh gachasi. Gachasi. Right, okay. I, I put the emphasis in the wrong place, sorry, yes. Gachasi. It's not so much the stress that I detected a slight lengthening of the vowel, Gachasi. Oh, right. yes. Gachasi. Yes, so the um, Italian is coming in, I'm sorry. Ah, right, okay. So we've got, yes. we've got two Italians here, oh, we, Italian. Mariano and Angela. <laughs> totally good. <laughs> um, you may think that I am being... As we go along, you may think that I'm being excessively fussy about long vowels and short vowels, single consonants, double consonants, aspirated and unaspirated. If I'm fussy about it, I'm going to make no apology. I'm going to continue being extremely fussy deliberately because it is absolutely vitally important to, um, to get, get them right. It can change the entire meaning of things. Um, for instance, some very simple examples like bala, meaning strength, bala, meaning a child, for example, bala, bala. The only difference between those two is the length of the first a ah and a. Ah. So it's, um, it gives you an entirely different meaning. Um, to the to the word so and the likewise the difference between single and double consonants um, for example in I'll give you a Pali example because it's one that springs to mind between for example um, atta and atta two entirely different words in Pali atta means here atta from the Sanskrit artha meaning the, you know, the, the goal or the, the ob ob objective. Atta, atta. Good, so I will continue to be very fussy and strict ab uh, about, the, about these things. Um, yeah, it's interesting, your vowel length in Italian, you want to say get, get chati, don't you? Get chati, it sounds, sounds, sounds so Italian. So just to, just to make it clear, what's the best way for me to, what's the best sound then, is it? Prachat? That's it. Is that it? Shortened. Everything is shortened. It is shortened. So remember the army, the art of army was also I go and he goes. Gachami cha, gachati cha. That's quite short. Okay, thank you. Right, there we are. Now, um, we could. We've been through everybody. Is there any? I, there are lots and lots of people. There are forty-four people in attendance, with um, with eleven of you um, who have volunteered. Come on, come on, somebody who's going to be brave. <laughs> I'm going. Okay. We've got we've got ten minutes left. What we were going to do is you, um, we were going to spice it up a bit with a little ah, Teresa Wood, welcome, well done. Let you be, be an example. So, well, are we on D? I think we're on D now. Um, so if you can do D for us, Teresa, you just so, read me out because I don't have the text. Read out the English. Okay, that even better if you don't have the text in front of you. That's perfect. Um, he goes. And asks. And asks. So, um, Gachati sa prachatisa. No, no, ka at the end. Um, so he goes, Gachati ka 
Uh-uh. Is, remember, the, the C is always ah. in our system, pronounced as a Ch. Yeah. <laughs> Prachatika. Gachatika. Uh, do you remember the Ch? Ch, ch. not Ka. Prachati Ch. <laughs> and and uh, so. Gachatika. Prachatika. Okay, cha. but uh, cha, that's it. But do remember, <laughs> although I go is with the long ah, gachami, as in buddhang saranang gachami and so on. Um, with the ati, it's not an ati, it's a short ati, gachati. Gachati. Gachati, that's perfect. That's perfect. Gachati, Hold... prachati. Gachati, prachati. Gachati, cha, prachati, cha. That's very good. Hold that in your mind now. You got that right. Well done. Excellent. <laughs> so we, what we were going to do is to spice it up with, um, okay, I've been through everyone whose um, faces on the screen. I've made, okay, you're all there. Um, we were going to spice it up with a little verse, a very simple verse. Um, so I'm now going to call this up on, oh, wrong one. Sorry, silly me, it's got lost somewhere. Hang on there, I'll be right with you. Um, I'm going to get, sorry, Aginus lessons, supplementary versus analysis, verse one. Is my screen shared? I can't see from. No, it's not. Okay, sorry. Share screen. Mm -hmm. Right. Can you see it now? The good. Okay. There's a bit more grammar. There's a bit more grammar in this than than, than we've done. It's all, all jolly good fun. And if you say to yourselves, well, we haven't got to this bit yet. Well, the answer is <laughs> you're here now and, <laughs> and we're doing it now. This is the, from the, uh, from the series Australian National University Joy of Sanskrit, but they have an online course that follows the, the Thomas Eginus book. And for each lesson, they've thrown in this extra verse. The first one for lesson one is slightly more complex than the others. That normally is quite simple as we go along. This one encourages you to practice. So, abhyasu hi, sorry, abhyasu nahi tyaktavyo, abhyasu hi parambalam, anabhyase visham vidya, sorry, anabhyase visham vidya, ajirne bhojanam visham. Now, this word abhyasa means practice. And I'm going to bring up my, sorry, bring up my iPad screen. And this very first word abhyasa, meaning practice, is just such a lovely example of how words are formed in Sanskrit and how if you see behind it, look how the word is formed and hopefully you get that aha moment and it will be perfectly remembered. Let me go to a new screen. There is the root as. By the way, coincidentally, the root is the, the root looks the same as as equals to, to, to be, it's just coincidentally, it's the same root. But there is the root as, meaning to throw, as in throwing a stone. Many of you will know, by the way, going down a little linguistic rabbit hole now. All of you will know the ending tra. Tra, which means it's an implement or a means of doing something. Like, for example, my favorite example, we all know it, man, meaning to think, or the, the mind, cognate with our English word mind. 
So a mantra is like a mind tool. That, that, that's the meaning of the word. A mantra is something you do that has an effect on your manas, on your mind, the mantra. And to give you a nice little example of word formation here, us from this root to throw an astra is a missile, something you throw, like an arrow or a spear, anything that's launched in battle or as fighting that you throw as an astra. Now, with very many roots that have a short a uh, followed by a single consonant, when you make a verbal noun out of it, you just lengthen the a, uh, lengthen the a uh, to a, uh, and add a short a. Uh. We now have a, a noun, asa, meaning throwing, the act of throwing. Incidentally, not to, sorry, another confused, not to be confused, the root with a long as, which you mean to sit, as in your asana, the yoga asana, which literally means a sitting. So let's look at abhyasa. Abhi plus asa by santi, the way that the words come together, abhyasa means practice. Abhi, same as in abhidhamma, for example. Abhi means on top of. And we know that word because it's, um, it's exactly the same as the Greek right in Roman characters, epi. For example, you have the epicenter of an earthquake. An earthquake takes place and the, where, where the center of the earthquake is will be some you know, a long distance been beneath the surface of the earth. The epicenter is the place on the surface of the earth that is immediately above the center of the earthquake. So the epicenter. So that epi is exactly the same as the Sanskrit and Pali, abhi. Um, and for example, uh, one of my lovely examples, a tafos in Greek is a tomb, it becomes a taf in English. So your epitaph is what you write upon your tomb. And what do you might ask somebody, what do you want as your epitaph? You know, the few words by which you wish to be re remembered is your epitaph, which simply means on the tomb, upon the tomb. And here's a really lovely example that the Sanskrit word shunya, meaning empty, became in Greek kenos, and the English, when we put into Latin script, then back into the English, is the seno. So cenotaph is actually the shunya, shunya, empty, shunya ta. The shunya taf, cenotaph, means the empty tomb. So the cenotaph is the it's the memorial to the dead, but it's called a cenotaph in Greek, kenotaphos, an empty tomb because nobody's actually buried there. It's like a tomb, it's a memorial, but nobody's actually buried there. So the cenotaph, that ceno, remember, cognate with shunya in, in Sanskrit, empty. Um, right, so, so the abhyasa, back to where we were, abhyasa means throwing on top, abhi, upon, asa, throwing. So if you practice something, you go over it and over it again. You go in English, we say go over it. In Sanskrit, you say abhyasa, throwing on top of it, adding on top of it. You see, that's, that, that, that's the word for practice, adding more on top, abhyasa. And for instance, um, the abhidhamma in Pali, you have the dhamma, the teaching of the Buddha, and the abhidhamma, is what is added on top, the additional teachings on top is the Abhidhamma. So right, Abhyasuhi, Abhyasu Nahi Tyaktavyo. The root Tyaj is to, to leave or to abandon. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that many roots, when you make a verbal noun out of them, if it's an a, ah, short a, ah, followed by a single consonant, it will often be lengthened. And we also saw um, the you know, yuj, the g to j. Yuj, the root yuj makes the noun yoga. 
the root tyaj makes the noun tyaja. In Pali, the tya followed by a vowel of mostly become ch. So we have in Pali, chaga in Sanskrit, tiaga, which is abandonment, it means re renunciation, the chaga, meaning the abandoning thing, renouncing, renouncing pleasures, renouncing worldly things, the chaga, so tiaga. Now, tavya is the ending, the gerundive ending, meaning requiring to be done. It's the cognate with um, the Latin ending as andus or endus or iendus. Best way of remembering it is in Latin, amare, to love. The name Amanda means lovable. Hmm? And agere, to do, from which we get the word act. And in modern English, we say agenda, things needing to be done, things that have to be, is your agenda. The most common equivalent in Sanskrit is the tavya ending, so requiring to be. So we have tyaj plus tavya, abandonable, requiring to be abandoned. Now, you can't have a j followed by a so it becomes tyaktavya. Tyaktavya, that means abandonable, something you can neglect or leave. So, na tyaktavya, not to be abandoned. So, abhyaso nahi, the he is just an emphatic. Abhyaso nahi tyaktavyo. Practice is not to be neglected. Now, I th this particular, now this little verse, and I think all of the ones that we will be encountering in each lesson, they're all fairly simple in grammar and all you know, little you know, morals in life, and all of them are worthy of being learnt by heart. So, if you could. Um, you can eat just even learning this first pada. A pada, by the way, is the word for a half line. Let me get out of shared screen now. Hang on, stop share. Stop share, here we are. So if you can just learn, sorry, <laughs> teaching you and getting it wrong. Practice is not to be neglected which sounds like a very, very opportune moment <laughs> to, um, to bring this class to an end.